What is going on guys welcome to this new tutorial series on neural 9 about go programming this video here is the first episode the introduction episode we're going to talk a little bit about what go actually is why you should learn it what the usp of the language is the focus of the language is we're going to look at a couple of projects where go is being used and we're also going to talk about who this tutorial series is for or who it is perfect for and how it is structured in a basic way so let us get right into it all right, so let us talk a little bit about the Go language here. And I have some bullet points on my second monitor, but I don't want to just bombard you with pros and cons that I read off the second screen. So I'm just going to use this as an orientation. I want to talk a little bit about Go freely because I think before we learn a language, you should know why it's important to learn this language. And when you go to golang.org, you can see Go is an open source programming language that makes it easy to build simple, reliable and efficient software. So this is almost all you need to know about Go, except for maybe the fact that it is optimized for concurrency. This is not necessarily listed here in the first page, but it's open source. It's also backed by Google, which is an important thing when it comes to support, because if a language lacks the public support, it's not going to grow. Even if it's a perfect language, if not enough people are using it, it's not going to succeed. But Go is backed by Google and by a very strong community, which is growing. Uh, but besides that, it is simple. It's almost as simple as Python. It is reliable. It is super reliable. I think it's more reliable than languages like Java. We're going to talk about that in a second as well. And it is efficient. It's way faster. It has a high performance comparable to that of C, C++. And as I said, it's optimized for concurrency. Now, it's not as simple as Python because Python simplicity is inherent because of of the dynamic typing and the fact that it's so flexible, but this comes at a cost, which is the performance. So in Go, you have a very uh, strongly and statically uh, or a strong static typing system. So you have uh, the, the language is strongly and statically typed, which means that if you define a variable to be something, uh, you cannot change that later on. In Python, you can say, first of all, I'm going to use this as an integer, then it's going to be a string, then I'm going to perform some operation that is not even supported for that type, but it still works because you know what, it's Python. In Go, you have that type safety. If you define something to be an integer, it's going to be an integer. Uh, it's a compiled language, which, also, which is also a point which makes it uh, faster by nature, you could say, because interpreted languages are just slower during, during runtime usually. Um, and besides that, Go, as, as it says here, is very reliable and very safe, which means that the, it, it's so safe that Go doesn't even allow you to compile scripts if you do stuff that is stupid or just dangerous. For example, if you have a circular dependency in Go, you're not going to be able to compile your program because Go is just to tell you this is a circular dependency. You're not allowed to do that. And also you have in, in Go, you have this unsafe keyword, which allows you to do certain things but only if you specify that they're unsafe, only if you as a developer acknowledge that this is an unsafe piece of code. And if you don't do that, it's going to say, no, I'm not going to allow you to compile that because that code is not safe. But if you add this unsafe keyword, it's going to say, okay, you know, it's unsafe. So I'm going to allow you to do that. It also has garbage collection, which is something that C, C++ did not have. So you don't need to care too much about mem uh, memory management on a manual or in a manual manner. Um, it's optimized for concurrency. We're going to talk about that later on in the series because I'm going to emphasize uh, the concurrent features of the Go language. And basically Go excels everywhere where we need uh, microservices, networking scripts. Uh, it is a number one candidate for replacing a lot of web development languages. A lot of people think that Go is going to be the future of web development because it's very optimized, as I said, for concurrency, microservices and so on. Um, it's platform independent as well, and it's very minimalistic. Uh, the language specification of the Go language is very, very small. There's not a lot of things. There, there are not a lot of, um, what would you say, principles or concepts of the language. You have the basic stuff like loops and conditions and so on. You have Go routines and a lot of different things, but it's not, uh, it's nothing compared to languages like Java. The lang uh, Java language specification, I don't know how many pages it has, like over 700, I think. Uh, the Go language specification is very, very simple. It's not too big. Uh, and as I said, the language is quite minimalistic. Uh, 
Also, it's open source, as we know, it's backed by Google, it has a very strong community. And one thing that's very important about the Go language is that it's rapidly rising in popularity. Everyone knows that Python is important, that Java is important, C++ is important, JavaScript is important. Go is not necessarily necessarily the language that you think about when you think about the top players in programming languages. But when you go to the GitHub language stats here, and you go to pull requests, for example, you can see that Go is the uh, in, in the year 2021 quarter one, you can see that the language with the fourth most pull requests is Go, which is ridiculous. If you, if you think about the fact that Go is modern and on the rise, you can see how much work is being done in Go. And if you go to something like stars, which, you know, could signal more about the popularity, you can see that Go is even on rank number three. So Go is on the rise rapidly. And one project, for example, that is written in Go is Docker, even though it's not entirely written in Go. But here you can see, for example, this part is written in Go. Um, and the top languages used here are Go and TypeScript and JavaScript and so on. Um, and also Kubernetes, even though I have not used Kubernetes ever before, so I don't really know what it's doing. But I know that it's a very popular project, as you can see here, 76.2k stars, you can see it's 96.7% based on Go. And also people that I follow that I really respect in the computer science field, like George Hotz, use Go for some of their repositories. Uh, and, you know, Go is just a language on the rise, it's supported by important personalities, a lot of interesting projects are written in Go. And this is just something it's, it's a modern language with a lot of potential with a very uh, high potential, you could say. And all this together, this, this performance, simplicity, um, and this outlook for the future is something that, in my opinion, makes Go a very good candidate for a next language to learn. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about who this tutorial series is for and what the basic structure of it is going to be. And this tutorial series is mainly focused on people who already know how to program, at least some basic programming skills. You don't need to be good at programming, but you should be familiar with the basic concepts like what is a loop, what is an if statement, what is a function, what is a return value, what is a variable, what is a data type, and so on, which does not mean that you cannot watch this tutorial series if you have never programmed in your life before, but it's going to be harder for you because in the first couple of episodes, I'm going to not necessarily rush through the concepts, but I'm going to not explain the basic principle of a loop, I'm going to show you how it's done in Go, and what it does in a basic way, but I'm not going to explain to you what a loop does fundamentally, or what a variable is fundamentally, you should already know what that is. And I'm just going to show you how it's done in Go. So if you know, basic Python, basic Java, basic JavaScript, that's totally fine. And we can we can uh, just learn how it's done in Go. So what I'm trying to say is that you can watch this tutorial se series, even if you're programming with Go for the first time, or if you're programming in general for the first time using Go. Um, but the emphasis or the focus of this tutorial series is on people who already know a programming language and now want to learn Go in addition to the programming language or languages that they already know. So as the next programming language, you could say, so you can follow along as a beginner, but it is better if you already know a programming language, whatever that programming language is. So uh, that's who this tutorial series is focused on. Now, when it comes to the basic structure, I'm going to try to keep it as flexible as possible. I don't want to have a too rigid structure where I say episode number one is going to be that episode number two is going to be that and so on. But the basic outline is that in the beginning videos, like in the first two or three videos, we're going to cover all the basic concepts like uh, loops and ifs and else statements and variables and data types operators and uh, arrays and so on. So the basic things that we already know from all the other programming languages, we're going to talk about how this is done in Go, I'm not going to explain what an array basically is, I'm just going to show you how it's done in Go compared to other languages. Um, and once we're past that, once we're beyond, once we go beyond the beginning basics, we're going to focus on the Go specific things in more detail. So when it comes to stuff like Go routines, or when it comes to stuff like uh, channels, and and all the things that are special in the Go language, we're going to spend more time there, we're going to explain these concepts from scratch. Uh, but when it comes to the basic concepts, we're just going to do it faster. Uh, showing the differences between Go and other languages that that is where the focus is going to be. 
And depending on your feedback, we're going to have a lot of videos here or just the basics. So what I'm going to do definitely like in the C++ tutorial series, I'm going to definitely show you the basics. I'm going to show you the Go routines and the channels and the basic fundamental pieces of the Go programming language. If the feedback is good and if a lot of people watch this tutorial series, I'm going to do more and more videos over time. If the demand falls down as it was the case in the C++ tutorial series, uh, I'm just going to cover those initial topics and then we're going to proceed to another tutorial series. So it depends on you guys and your feedback. So that's it for this introductory episode into the Go programming series or Go programming tutorial series. Uh, if you like this series, if you want to see a lot more videos in this series, let me know in the comment section down below. Hit the like button. Don't forget this. And also subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.